Welcome back everyone. You are watching Psycho Professor English and in today's video we are going to discuss about our 2021 question paper and this video will be a part of your premium 2.0 course and this is going to be part number 1. If you wish to join this complete series then you can get the details in our Telegram channel and the link for Telegram channel is given in the description. You can join it from there. So this is your complete guidance complete book for your NTA UGC net psychology paper 1 and paper 2 so you can get this book also from that same link so let's begin first of all ugc net 2021 psychology question paper comprises of 100 questions and after watching this series you will get to know that how the questions are getting repeated again and again and you will be able to solve it very easily and if you watch all the complete videos then you will be able to remember each and every concept that has been told to you in all these videos all right so first of all question number 1 is asking about which of the following nerves keyword number 1 carry the sensory messages from skin eyes ears to the central nervous system c and s options are given as efferent efferent cranial and peripheral so first of all this question is coming from your unit number 4 biological basis of behavior and the question is asking about central nervous system what is happening over here all right so before we answer the question we will deep dive into something called your nervous system all right so what is the nervous system nervous system comprises of your cns plus your pns that we call as peripheral nervous system and your central nervous system before that what is nervous system we will deep dive into your basic building block of matter and that is what that is your cell so if you have studied biology in 11th and 12th it is most likely possible that you know what is cell what all it is carrying about mitochondria protein and all of that the cell body as well and the cell membrane also you would have an idea all right okay but the most important thing every, every each and every cell is having is your nucleus all right so each and every cell will have what will have nucleus so just like the same cell in our nervous system for our nervous system there is a basic building block of cell that we call as a nerve cell or you can also call it as a neuron all right so what is neuron neuron is a basic cell which is having its existence where it is having its existence in the nervous system so all these neurons combine together makes up what makes up your nervous system so first of all nervous system then we have two divergences over here first of all we will talk about your cns central nervous system and then we will talk about your pns so what does cns consist of it comprises of your brain plus your spinal cord all right so what is brain you know already the top of your head your brain area plus this thing behind your back back portion this is your spinal cord which com comprises of cervical thoracic lumbar and sacral region as well and what is pns what is peripheral nervous system everything apart from brain and spinal cord in your body is comprising of what it is considered under your peripheral nervous system all right so far you all tracking okay so let's now do, draw this this is your brain and this is your spinal cord all right this is your brain area and this is your s p i n a l so what is this blue thing this is your c n s and rest of your body is what rest of your body is p n s peripheral nervous system the word periphery is always used because it is in the periphery or this is your central portion this c n s is your central portion and everything your hands and all that thing is in your periphery all right okay so now do remember one thing that whenever whenever and wherever the message is coming from where the message is coming from this stimulus so let's suppose this is a tree and this these are your eyes this is your nose this is your sweet smile so you are watching this tree from your eyes all right so whenever the message is coming from where there the first of all the message is going into your eyes then from your eyes it is going to your auditory not sorry nerve and then it is going to your brain area the visual cortex all right so sorry not auditory it is your optic nerve it is making of optic nerve and the message is going to your visual v1 area all right so whenever the message is coming from outside and going inside from your sensory organs to your brain and what is brain brain is the part of your central nervous system so the question is asking about 
which of the following nerves carry the sensory messages from skin eyes and ears so it may be a touch it may be a visual thing or it may be a sound or vibration and the message is going from where the message is going from these sensory organs your sensory system to your central nervous system so what is central nervous system central nervous system is your brain all right so every time the answer will be what answer will be your option number second efferent nerves whenever the message is going from outside to inside inside means your cns comprises of brain so it will always be your efferent nerve so let's suppose you are touching a hot stove this is your hand you are touching this and the message is going from here so of which nerves will carry efferent nerves will carry this message so let's suppose you saw a tree the eyes are carrying the message which nerves will carry efferent nerves will carry all right you are listening a song of maybe shakira and the vibrations are going from what going from your efferent nerves so efferent nerves will always take this message from outside to the inside of your central nervous system and then if you like the song if you like this visual stimulus and if you like or hate this touch feel who will tell the message the cns the brain will interpret and it will send to your motor commands and whenever this is coming what we refer to as we refer to as your efferent nerves so make sure that you remember the primary concept over here is your cns and from cns whenever there will be an exit whenever there will be an exit who will take the charge the efferent nerves will be taking the charge and whenever there is a entry who will take the charge there are efferent nerves so wherever the message is coming from outside to inside this inside is always your central nervous system the message is coming from outside to inside it will always be 100% efferent nerves nothing apart from that and whenever this cns is sending command to your hand or eye or your ears it will be always what it will be always efferent nerves okay so i hope now you have got a better idea about what are efferent nerves and what are efferent nerves sound similar but it has different functions and when we will study forward you will also come to know about motor nerves or your sensory nerves okay so make sure that you remind this efferent nerves will carry the message outside of your cns from your cns it will give the motor command out of your cns and the efferent nerves will always go into your cns and this is your correct answer over here option number second efferent nerves which of the following nerves carry the sensory messages from the skin skin is your sensory organ eyes are your sensory organ ears are your sensory organs and from the sensory organs the message will go to your cns the central nervous system it will always be efferent so let's suppose the question was different which of the following nerves carry the carry the messages from central nervous system to skin eyes and ears then what will be the answer then the answer will be your efferent nerves i hope now you got the differentiation between these two and you will never forget this in your lifetime and this cranial nerves are part of your cranium which we will discuss when we look into the figure of our brain and these peripheral nerves are nothing in relation to what the question is asking over here all right so we just discussed our unit number 4 what we discussed we just discussed our sensory system part and in the sensory system we discussed about eye ear and nose or touch haptic perception and then we dive into our cns part plus pns part so make sure that you remind yourself each and every time cns adding on pns will always make what will always make your nervous system and nervous system is made up of what made up of number of billions of trillions of your neurons all right and how the neuron looks like it looks like something like this this and these are the terminal buttons over here and it is ns neurotransmitters inside this glutamate serotonin melatonin whatever it is and then we are having a nucleus and then this is your this point is your what this is your exon hillock from where your action potential get started and then we are having this thing which we called as our myelin sheath and the ap will generate something like this to this to this and the message will be transmitted very fastly all right okay so 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 we are discussing about unit number 4 and in unit number 4 whenever make sure that you remind yourself of this thing again and again whenever there is a physical energy for let's suppose for example the vibrations the songs we hear the light or we can say wave which we see wavelength and the touch or feel we got 
each and everything these are what these are your physical energies these are photons and these are sound waves amplitude and all that so these are physical energies but our brain does not understand anything about this physical energy so what is the procedure that is happening to change physical energy to your what to your neural impulse because brain just know about what know about only action potential and how the message how fast the message is being transmitted and this process conversion of physical energy to neural impulse or nerve signal or nerval or sorry not nerval energy the neural energy we can say the process is called as your transduction all right so this is transduction changing of physical energy to nerve impulse all right let's move ahead question number second a woman who learns that she has been deprived of a promotion to a higher job in a company may storm into her boss's boss's boss office and have temper tantrum it exemplifies and now this question is we can say from your personality portion where we have what we called as defense mechanisms eight nine defense mechanisms are there and you need not to study each and every defense mechanism again and again because this is the only first time we can say or twice this question is getting repeated in 2021 and after 2021 till 2024 there was only one instance when question like this has came up in your cancel paper i guess it was a question in your cancel paper all right so you need not to study these defense mechanism mug it up again and again it's just a matter of luck you just need to go through all the defense mechanism what is there just get the concept once and that's it the chances of coming this question again are varied we can say approximately 10% to 15% the question will come again repeat all right okay so what is the correct answer over here you just need to do what you just need to make sure that you study all these defense mechanisms so this is not sublimation there is no energy being sublimed or there is no rationalization over here there is no reaction formation nothing is being changes so what is the answer answer is simply your regression over here so these are four defense mechanisms and out of these four option number 4 regression is the correct answer over here because in regression this woman is going back to her childhood or she is just showing what she was doing when she was child and she has been deprived of some things so it is simply the answer option number 4 regression over here and the chances of repeating this question is very very less so we will not waste our precious time all right okay now question number 3 and this question is also never being repeated question number 4 but you had need to gather the concepts because you are watching what you are watching you know what you are watching which of the following is correct for the pheromones so the question is asking about what asking about pheromones so it's pretty obvious the question is asking from your unit number 4 and in your uric net syllabus there is nothing mentioned about pheromones yes there is mention about hormones and there is a mention about neurotransmitters but there is no mentioning of or it has not included anything about pheromones so this is your something we called out of syllabus topic yes we can but you are watching this video so don't worry now first of all the question is asking about which of the following is correct all right biochemicals found within the brain which affects a person behaviors theek okay? hai sorry then option number second biochemicals which play an important role in transmitting information from neuron to neuron okay chemical messengers found in central nervous system okay chemical substances emitted by the person into the environment affecting the behavior of others and what will be the correct answer over here just try to think once all right and if you are confused let me tell you the correct answer over here is option number 4 now just explore this with me why the answer is this chemical substances all right so we all know what are chemicals okay so our body is having number of chemicals so chemical substances emitted by the person so you and i are emitting what pheromones all right pretty good all right person into the environment affecting the behavior of others all right so let's suppose that you and i are playing what we are playing basketball badminton kabaddi kho kho whatever we are playing and what we are sweating and that smell we can say something like that is where in is in the environment and affecting the behavior of others all right so these are not to be confused with what with parfa or we can say the perfumes all right so how perfumes act similarly it is chemical substances which are emitted by us by a person by not animals make sure that you remind yourself of this by person into the environment affecting the behavior of others and now let me tell you a real life example which you can relate it with very easily so let's suppose you are a boy or you are a girl whatever is the case may be and now 
this boy is sitting and let's suppose this is one girl and this is second girl and this is third girl all right so the probability of this girl sorry this boy liking some girl is very high if she is an athlete or she is an dancer but the likelihood of this boy liking this girl is very very shallow if she is very very studious or she is wearing glasses and she is completely into study why athlete thing and dancer thing the main thing which is common is sweat all right so if you can relate it with this so this is something concept of pheromones as well behave something like that same thing all right okay and now let's suppose this is a girl she is going to be most probably liking a dancer a footballer or cricketer or whatever up the this guy is playing sports and she is very very less likely to fall for someone who is very very studious all right why the reason is sweat and now you can think why the chemical substances emitted by the person into the environment affecting the behavior of others so let's suppose some someone is playing something and he is coming or she is coming around you then you that smell will make you to affect your behavior for them all right so this is the concept of what this is the concept of pheromones and for your this examination it is enough that you know about pheromones like this only all right so you can just add a synonym pheromones something like sweat okay all right so now you know the correct answer the correct answer is option number 4 but the game is not over yet all right so let's dive into biochemicals all right so these are biochemicals so let's suppose the nta traps you into a question something like biochemicals emitted by the person into the environment affecting the behavior of others no these are only chemical substances all right so this minute thing this minute thing you need to be careful of biochemicals are different and chemical are different thing all right okay then biochemicals found within the brain which affect a person's behavior so are pheromones pheromones inside our brain or in our brain within our brain no those are neurotransmitters which affects a person's behavior maybe schizophrenia maybe adhd whatever it is so pheromones are not this thing then biochemicals which play an important role in transmitting information from neuron to neuron no those are again glutamate acetylcholine hormones and not hormones but neurotransmitters epinephrine norepinephrine and all of that so neuron to neuron transmission is not done by the pheromones it is done by the nt our neurotransmitters all right okay so this is wrong this is wrong and chemical messengers found in the central nervous system no no we are not finding any chemical messengers in our central nervous system known as pheromones so all the three options are absolutely wrong what is the correct answer chemical substances emitted by the person into the environment affecting the behavior of others all right so this is the correct answer moving forward to question number 4 all right which of the following describes the enduring facilitation of synaptic transmission that occurs following activation of synapses by high intensity and high frequency stimulation of presynaptic neurons okay enduring facilitation of synaptic transmission so this is a question from 2021 and then it gets never repeated this ltp this thing has been asked never in nta history after 2021 exam paper all right so you have to be little aware they might ask you in december or june session you have to be little aware about this thing okay all right so the question is from your unit number 4 they have given action potential absolute refractory period relative refractory period and our long term potentiation and this question these absolute and relative these two keywords or these two points have been asked in your 2019 2020 session paper so that's why pyqs are very 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 important and if you are watching with us don't need to be afraid of anything all right so which of the following describes the enduring facilitation of synaptic transmission so let's suppose we don't know anything about this but we know something called this we will start very 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 basic these are neurons and this is a soma and this is a nucleus and this is a myelin sheath let's suppose some rectangle myelin sheath this is action potential being generated all right so we know this is action potential starts from where starts from your exon hillock and when it will start it will start when it is, has passed minus 55 millivolt threshold and the resting state is your minus 70 millivolt it will depolarize on plus 30 millivolt and the graph will form like this okay so this is action potential what does it do it when the cell is activated sodium comes in potassium little bit goes out and then this action potential gets started so now from this knowledge only 
is the answer will be action potential over here no it is never going to be the answer because why enduring facilitation of synaptic transmission the question is asking about synaptic transmission that occurs that is occurring following activation of synapses by high intensity and high frequency stimulation of presynaptic neuron so now we have to understand first of all what is a presynaptic neuron so we will again make the diagram of our neuron so this is a neuron these are the terminal buttons over here which comprises of what which comprises of glutamate neurotransmitter acth acetylcholine ach sorry and then what this is your next we can say dendrite or next muscle cell maybe and now this is happening something like this and this gap is called as what this gap is called as synapse or synaptic cleft or synaptic gap whatever now whenever the action potential is generated from here it will come bouncing like this it will hit this terminal button neurotransmitters will release from this and will bind to these receptor sites it will bind over here and then what will happen this cell depending upon the transmission which is being stimulated to this neuron it, if it is high then again ap will generate over here and the message will pass on to n3 but the point of discussion over here is this neuron n1 and this is neuron n2 and this n1 neuron is called as what called it is called as presynaptic neuron this is n1 presynaptic because this is a synapse this is synaptic cleft or synaptic gap gap and then this is what this is your post synaptic neuron so now you have also a differentiation of what is presynaptic what is post synaptic all right so n1 is your presynaptic neuron and n2 is your what n2 is your post synaptic neuron and in between those what is there there is synapse all right so first of all presynaptic neuron then we will have a gap and then we will have what we will have post synaptic neuron and this gap is called as what this gap is called as synapse and this gap is very very minute not this big as i have shown here this is very very minute and the neurotransmitters will be here released and it will bind to this post synaptic neuron okay now let's look into the question which of the following describes the enduring facilitation of synaptic transmission all right so this is something called enduring facilitation of synaptic transmission that is occurring following activation of synapses activation of synapses means this thing by high intensity and high frequency stimulation of presynaptic neuron so when this presynaptic neuron is where n1 so when this will be stimulated by high intensity and high frequency stimulation what will happen over here and the answer will be answer will be your option number 4 ltp which we called as long term potentiation all right absolute refractive period is not the answer relative refractive period will not be the answer the answer correct is your long term potentiation all right so first of all you know this thing that action potential is never going to be the answer because it has nothing to do with synapse as well as absolute refractive period and relative refractive period all these three have nothing to do with your this gap this is your n1 now we have drawn it vertically and this is your n2 all right so this is synaptic cleft or gap so whatever these three are referring to are referring to whatever is happening in the n1 during action potential action potential not during long term potentiation all right so the correct answer is option number 4 long term potentiation over here now you will be wondering what is absolute refractory period and what is relative refractory period so for understanding this we will need a diagram something like this 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 no 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 like this and this is your always remember this is very 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 important this is lecture number 1 of the series 2021 and this thing will be with your with you entire lifetime so make sure that you encode it very very properly so this is your minus 70 millivolt and whenever you are idle state or your resting state is at, is at your minus 70 millivolt then this is your what this is called as threshold which is your minus 55 millivolt make sure that you are thorough with what are called integers so that you don't miss out on these things because people do miss in the examination hall but uh, but but make sure that you revise these lectures very well and then we have this thing plus 30 or sometimes 35 sometimes 25 you can see plus 30 millivolt of signal over here all right so whenever the neuron is at resting state whenever 
the neuron is at resting state it will be always in minus 70 millivolts so let's suppose you were sitting idle and just you saw the notification all right you just saw the notification of psycho professor english that this is some 2021 amazing series coming up then what was happening before just two second before that you were at minus 70 millivolt all right then the, as soon as you saw the notification it comes it bounces to minus 55 okay this is some threshold and as soon as you click on that it get depolarized and then you are watching this lecture and something like this all right so first neuron n1 action potential generated like this you were at resting state at minus 70 millivolt then as soon as you saw the notification it was some threshold okay that i might click and as soon as you clicked because it was so intense that it might be helpful for you it, it might not be helpful for you then what happened it happened as depolarization of your n1 and then it goes like this okay all right okay so this is your only first cycle this is minus 70 millivolt this is minus 55 the threshold and this is plus 30 millivolt when your period is happening and what we refer to as we refer to this period as absolute refractory period why because in this period in absolute refractory period the cell will not be able to generate any other action potential and that's why we called it as what we called it, it as absolute refractory period because right now this cell will not be able to generate another action potential at this point of time in his life and now next what is happening this is your minus 70 millivolt resting state when the depolarization when the repolarization takes place so this is your depolarization state and this is your repolarization so when this comes below the resting state and now the temperature not sorry temperature the millivolt has gone to approximately minus 80 maybe or minus 90 and then this period is called as what this period is called as your hyperpolarization and also in this period the cell will not be not be again able to generate action potential until and unless it have high intensity stimulus coming from behind so this period is called as what this is called as your relative refractory period all right this is called as your relative refractory period so the question they might ask you again in future then when you will need stimulus of high intensity you will need stimulus of high intensity more than your resting state when it is in your relative refractory period all right so let's sum up it again so that you don't get confused so first of all when you are at minus 70 millivolt make sure that you draw this in your copy notebook tab whatever you are watching this video in and at this state your cell is what your cell is polarized at this state your cell is polarized means it is at resting state okay then at minus 55 millivolt it is touching its threshold and at plus 30 millivolt from here to here it is called as the cell is getting what the cell is depolarized after touching this threshold this plus 30 plus 30 millivolt it is coming drop down and we will call it as repolarized and when it is coming more than minus 70 so now you can see it is coming down very 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 down minus 80 millivolt minus 85 millivolt minus 90 millivolt then what we will say we will say hyper polarized because the cell was earlier polarized but now it is too much polarized that it will need more more high intensity stimulus from outside to again generate action potential over here all right i hope now it is pretty much clear to you so in the whole scenario of we discuss about this table this chart the action potential did we discuss anything about presynaptic neurons synaptic transmission or synapses did we discuss any of the things no we didn't discuss any of the things so it's pretty obvious action potential will not be the answer ar arp will not be the answer as well as rrp will not be the answer so these all are thing which are interrelated but long term potentiation is not related to any of this it is related to what it is related to this now again if suppose nta ask you question you will be able to solve it very very easily and you will find it this question getting repeated again and again 
and when we will be doing 2019-20 series we will also discuss this point this arf the arp and rrp again once over there all right okay moving forward to question number five if a person's distinctive social category makes him or her vulnerable to stereotyping it is referred to as now whatever we have discussed so far were questions majorly from your unit number four and now we have jumped to question number sorry syllabus number unit number eight that is our social psychology all right so this question is from your social psychology point and this is important because it is getting repeated not the same things are getting repeated but the syllabus the uh, pattern of asking questions is getting repeated again and again all right okay so you have to be thorough with unit number eight very very much important very very important if a person's let's suppose you're a person's you're a person if a person's distinctive social category you have a something called distinctive social category makes him or her vulnerable to stereotyping all right it is referred to as means there are people four of your friends are here and you are here and what is happening over here is you have some distinctive social category you are just out of the world you are just extraordinary you are just phenomenal and it will make what it will make you vulnerable to stereotyping from your these four friends all right so let's suppose you are very 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 poor background or you are very 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 rich background and just the vice versa your friends are now you are more vulnerable to stereotyping it is referred to as what it will be referred to as token integration neo sexism in gratification token bias all right so you might not be able to answer this question very very easily or in one go you need to do or explore all the topics you need to go through all the syllabus of your unit number 8 then only you can answer this easily but for now the correct answer is option number 1 token integration and this is not token something which is related to what your operant conditioning thing all right this is not about token economy and something like that all right this is different token and that is different token and it is not neo sexism it is not ingratiation so if you can remember ingratiation is what it is a technique it is a technique which we use where which we used door in the face face in the door and all those techniques of what of compliance we can say when we study about compliance when we, when we will study about compliance and all the questions related to that we will also discuss about ingratiation or is it about flattery or something okay we will discuss over here in point number 3 so this is not the answer ingratiation is not the answer token bias is not the answer neo sexism is not the answer token integration is the correct answer over here option number 1 token integration is the correct answer so let's suppose again if this question comes in the same form or any other different form but you remember the example of you being poor or rich and your friend being the opposite of that and you are more vulnerable to stereotyping they can mock on you they can laugh on you they can do anything to you because you are more vulnerable to stereotyping why because of your token integration in the upcoming videos we will also discuss deeply all these topics which are coming forward and next question is question number 6 and we will discuss this in our next part of this 2021 series so i hope you like this 2021 uris net psychology solve paper and if you like this video you can do the like if you share the video with your friends of english uris net psychology it's very good and hope you would have learned something from here you would imply this knowledge for your preparation and you can prepare very 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 efficiently very very precisely very very amazingly for your uris net psychology examination completely free but you have to do all the hard work you have to study like this and if you study like this it will be very 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 easy for you to clear uris net psychology examination without anything apart from the pyqs all right so whatever we have started in premium pyq 2.0 so whoever does this thing 2.0 thing they are just done they just need to do it repeat it again and again and again mercilessly they have to repeat it again and again from 2019 to 2024 or 25 whenever you are giving this examination or 2026 whenever you are watching the series if you do this premium pyq 2.0 complete videos then you are done you don't even need to look at the syllabus as well little bit of it is fine but if you do the pyqs thoroughly you can score very very amazingly so see you all in the next part of video number 2 and till then make sure that you subscribe the channel and if you have not yet joined on the telegram channel where we have shared the free ebook pyq pdf you can download it from there as well all right okay that's all for now see you all soon in the second video and in the meantime between time 
if you wish to join this premium 2.0 PYQ course, which is completely for you guys English medium so that you can reach to your destination quick and fast without wasting any single moment, any single time, then you can refer to this PDF in the Telegram group because all the details are there and you can join it as soon as possible. Because we will be doing all the PYQs from 2019 June to two, June 2024, all the PYQs will be done in your November month only. So it is a win-win situation for you if you do this and if the examination is in December or January, whenever it is, you will be able to revise it multiple times. All the PYQs will be done just the way you saw right now and thanks for watching the video. And one thing is very, very important that what that you make your own notes, my dear, that will be more helpful by instead of any PDF that I will be sharing, it will be very, very helpful. It will make you feel very, very good whenever you see those notes. It will give you immense pleasure. It will release endorphins or some happy neurotransmitters. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure that you tune into part number two. Thank you.